What's going on everybody? How are you doing today? Here I am in, in Encino, California and it's very, very loud here. That is Ventura Boulevard behind me. Uh, if you know the Tom Petty song, Free Fallen, all the vampires walk through the valley, move west, down Ventura Boulevard. That's what he's singing about, right around this area. And you can hear some yelling in the background. There's a um, lady in a bit of distress. Uh, homeless lady yelling, so you're gonna hear her a lot. Um, just sad, you see that, I see that in every city I go to, not just Los Angeles, and um, mental health crisis, right? Uh, something to, that we're gonna get into in this video, and she was just yelling at me a little bit when I was over there, and I think she, her comments might still be directed toward me, because I was filming the streets, and you know, I, I see a lot of homeless people when I uh, on my journeys in every city and like a lot of us you know we drive by them and let's not forget they're human beings and their lives are just as important as ours um, maybe we don't stop giving them money or food all the time I mean there's a lot of them everywhere but there's a mental health crisis and there's a homelessness issue and it's very very sad so when you hear the yelling in the background I just wanted you to know what, what you're hearing look down this street so right there where that car is coming right about there not too far past there is the home the former home of Phil Hartman now we know I did a video on Phil uh, November last year November 2022 and I was right there on that street, walking around, talking about it. And of course, Phil Hartman murdered by his wife. The videos of my channel, we know that story. But what, why I'm showing you that is, I was literally here, and that was around November 29th that I filmed it, November 30th. And immediately to my left, you're gonna see a little cafe, just past it, see that sub, sab, Sabzi Market, there's a CVS pharmacy, a good drugstore, a pharmacy. And I went in there to get some water and a cold coffee, which I don't usually drink, I drink hot coffee, but I needed one, and I parked right in front, okay? Before I filmed the Phil Hartman video, and I parked right in front, and I gazed across the street, and I remember this distinctly, and I was looking, at the Oak Tree Inn, which is right there. So I say that because not more than 14 days later, December 13th, 2022, Stephen Twitch Boss took his own life in that motel. And I remember sitting in my car, drinking the coffee as I was waiting to, it's a very, very busy road. And I was like, oh, I gotta wait till the traffic clears up have a couple sips of this coffee I was drinking to make the right right here and I was looking at that motel and I was like what a strange looking place you don't see further that way further east on Ventura Boulevard there's a lot of like little smaller motels and you know down in Los Angeles a lot of mo smaller motels you don't see a lot of those a bit more bigger hotels like, all around but these smaller ones that are kind of run down, a lot of them are disappearing. I just remember looking at it and thinking, what a strange looking little building that is. And what kind of motel is that? Like, I didn't know if it was a dilapidated one. I didn't know if it stayed there, like, on a weekly basis type of thing. But they rent rooms out by the day. And that's where Steven, Twitch boss, checked in the Monday before. He was found on a Tuesday. If you don't know Twitch, so you think he could dance? Ellen's DJ on The Ellen Show. I mean, when he passed away, there was an outpouring of grief. The man was beloved. He left behind three children, a wife. Uh, I believe one child was adopted, which doesn't make a difference, but I'm just saying. Uh, not adopted, it was his, from his wife's first uh, relationship or marriage. So three children. His house is a mere 14 minute walk from here. It's not far at all. I know where his house is. I don't want to go there and put it on camera because 
his wife and those kids still live there. And, you know, I'm doing something about where somebody died in their grave and all that, so it is a little, um, for maybe, I don't know, tacky, but I have my limits. And when there's kids involved, I'm not going to show the house where the kids are. So, he's very, very popular. I remember when he passed away, I got texts from my sister, I got texts from friends, and then my Instagram DMs and YouTube comments started to blow up. Are you going to do something about Twitch? Are you going to do something Twitch? And I said, I mean, he just passed away, and I'm not even in California. You know, that I usually think, I, I, it's sweet that people want me to do something on it right away, but of course I can't all the time, and also, there's got to be some time, you know, for if I'm going to visit a grave. We'll get to that in a bit. Look here. So Twitch was very, very popular. He was a DJ for Alan for about five years. Then he was made executive producer. And he posted Instagram videos with his wife and his family. Uh, from all accounts, happy, successful, had everything, everything going for him. Had everything you could want. But like I was saying about mental illness, you never know. And this, this, when it's suicide, when there's a family left behind, especially young children, their people are divided in their comments and their thoughts and their opinions, which everyone's entitled to. But really, I read a good quote or an interesting thing about mental health and suicide, and it was on. I, th I think it was on his Instagram page. Let me just take a look and see what uh, I think of what somebody wrote in the comments and I kind of agree our assumptions about what happened really mean nothing because we don't know and especially when it comes to such a horrific way to go out and to leave behind we don't know when someone's in that state of mind to take their own life and you want to blame them and say, how could you do that? How could you do that? We don't know. If somebody's in a suicidal state, they're not thinking straight. They're not thinking right. It's not that black and white. It's not that clear. You know what I mean? And this is a very loud street, I'm sorry, so I'm trying to make sure you can hear me. But it's just not, we just can't say, well, it's, he, what he did was wrong. Sure, I mean, but you can't, really judge him based on that what depths of despair did he have to be in to do that and people say his wife was shocked his wife and I mean there's conspiracy theories of course his wife was shocked but she should have known well, how do you know how do, do I know we're not privy to their inner sanctum to the family life of them we don't know what's going on you know the wife probably knew very well about his depression they was fighting but she was so shocked of course that he took his own life by gunshot and it's that room right there on the far left and it was in the bathroom and that is the bathroom window on the far left so by all accounts he walked here checked in at 10 30 a.m. on a Monday and spent the day in the room it's not certain when at what point he shot himself, and he shot himself in the head. Twitch took his own life here. And what is so, so loud? He was found, the nephew was supposed to check out on the Tuesday, and around 11.30 a.m., they did a welfare check. The hotel itself, and one of the housekeepers went into the room. Nothing was amiss in the room itself. Then she went into the bathroom and discovered his body. And they immediately called 911. And it was described as a pretty bad scene inside, as they would imagine. Now, no suicide note was left out, but he did have a bag with him. So apparently there was a suicide note in there. But it's that one right there on your left. It's cracked open just a little bit. That's room 249. I'm going to take you in right now and show you the inner sanctum. Sorry, the inner sanctum. I'm going to take you in right now and show you the interior. It's a courtyard type motel with two rows of rooms on the right and left and then a double building, a double floor here.
The one on the right, up top. Tragic news rocking the entertainment world today. Stephen Boss has died. Known as DJ Twitch on the Ellen DeGeneres talk show, it appears the 40-year-old took his own life. His wife, Allison, released a statement reading in part, we love you, we miss you, and we'll always save the last dance for you. So he had put his phone on airplane mode. His wife frantically could not get a hold of him. And just as she was filing a missing persons report, that's really loud there. I gotta find a place to talk. Just as she was filing a missing persons report, that's when he was discovered. I really got to stop crisscrossing Ventura Boulevard around 5.30 p.m. So it came as quite a shock to his family, his friends, co-workers, outpouring of, uh, uh, of grief online. Friends went to the house, friends and family went to his house right away to be with his wife and the children. But yeah, um... When I think of Twitch, I think of that smile. Very handsome man with a very, very big smile. And just, you think, you think somebody is doing okay. You would have no clue. You would have no clue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take you to Forest Lawn Glendale and explain the rest of the story there somewhat because his funeral was held there. And we'll get into the grave aspect of it because there is nothing online about his grave yet and I've even had people uh, friends that can that help me out with locating graves or things like that could have been cremated he could have been um, buried a forced on without uh, information being given to the public but we're gonna go there because I found something very interesting at forest on Glendale and again mental illness something that needs to be talked about and thankfully it is talking about more and more. Um, is there, is what happened preventable? It's a million dollar question. People say it is preventable, there is help out there. I hope so for, the, for people that are going through something like that. I, when we talk about mental illness and suicide and prevention suicide, you know, there's different schools of thought. Is it preventable? It's not preventable. I'm a glass half full type of person. I like to think it is preventable. I mean, I've, like I said, when you get into those that deep in depression, we don't know. We don't know what that person's going through, but let's hope that it can be stopped. And if you yourself are struggling, or you know someone's struggling, of course, you know, there are places you call, the link in the description below. There are, there are places to go. There are people that love you. Um, I love you. And it's just tragic. It happened right here. And I wanted to do something for Twitch. And this is what I'm doing. Raising maybe a little bit of awareness more. I hope maybe a little tiny. I know it's not, it's not much. But not let his death be in vain. Okay, let's drive over to Forest Lawn Glendale. Right now.
So here I am at Forest Lawn Glendale. Behind me is the Church of the Recessional, and this is where the funeral for Twitch was held. And there is no uh, information about his grave, whether or not it says that he is buried here at Glendale. Uh, a friend of mine, Craig, who you've seen on my channel before, he knows Forest Lawn Glendale very well. He called for me and they gave no information. They said there's no information regarding uh, Stephen's grave. And so, not sure where he is yet. He could, the funeral was held here, doesn't necessarily mean for sure that he is buried here at Forest Lawn. Could have been cremated with family or ashes spread somewhere, or he could be buried here, or buried at another cemetery. But I matched up some photos, and this is definitely where his funeral was held. And I'm gonna show you a little closer right now. You can definitely make out this uh, wall here. And then here's a church with a circle. I'm showing you some pictures right now. And this uh, recessional right here, this writing on the wall, and here's set up for a funeral uh, at some point. But you can see it was all here. So the funeral was held inside this church, which is at the very top of Forest Lawn Glendale. And there are no graves on the lawn. I already looked around and see what's out back here. I've never seen back here before. Take a look, just a little walkway it looks like. Yeah, it's another walkway. But yeah, you can see definitely that in the background. And also thanks to my friend Craig. He uh, knows the cemetery so well. He was the one who told me definitely was this church and then I matched up the photos as well and said yes this is where it was so just thinking it could have been an outdoor funeral around the corner because there are, it does look like the people are coming from his friends and family from that area over there through there uh, I don't think the church would be open right now never know let me take a look no but right here so that was my video about Stephen Twitch boss and here's where his funeral was held tragic and um, it's a beautiful beautiful spot I should show behind me here See another giant church in the background that I've never seen before. I've never been up to this area and I've been all around Forest Lawn Glendale. Tragic, tragic loss. And um, uh, you never know what someone's going through. I, I, I think um, someone who had it all. And, um, but you never know. Depression is a man. So rest in peace, Twitch. Thanks for watching. Peace out.